Keith came aboard uh, in Wethersfield in October of 2010 and we really didn't have a lot of technology at all and uh, from smart boards in all of the elementary classrooms all the way up to the recent rollout of one to one in grades 7 through 12. Keith Raffanello was behind it so um, that passion I certainly hope to have live on here in the district. Keith always had a vision even if we didn't seem like that vision was a possibility at the time. He put it out there and he made everybody on the team want to achieve that goal. Keith uh, had a farm and uh, he and his wife managed the farm uh, out in Thomaston. And, uh, they did a lot with uh, rescuing animals. They had uh, donkeys, they had chickens, uh, ponies, a uh, variety of the pigs, variety of different animals. So we often got stories as to what was going on on the farm from Keith. So, uh, I remember the time that they were trying to find a safe place for Kevin the turkey to, uh, to go to. And I just remember Keith lobbying really hard to get Kevin on his, on his farm. The first thing I remember about Keith was the first day I came to work, and uh, he'll be really missed primarily as a, as, a, as a friend. And my first day of work really shows why that is the case. I, I was here a little earlier than I should have been, trying to make a good impression, you know, and Keith was not there yet. Once Keith walked into Stillman, I knew this job would be fantastic, because he just smiled, shook my hand and said, let's go, we'll get you started, I'll explain everything in five minutes. By the time I had gotten my badge and I had gone to the main IT office at Webb, I had felt like I had been here forever because he felt immediately like I could relate to him, like he was a friend above all, not just a boss. You know, no matter how many meetings we sat in, he managed always to get those Red Sox in any chance he could. Keith was the best of us, full of energy and vigor, he could excite and educate with ease, always willing to lend a hand to anyone for any length of time. He made so many dreams a reality. He was not just a supervisor, but also a warm and kind friend. And of my friend, I say this, of all the souls I have encountered in my travels, his was the most humane, generous, optimistic, understanding, and helpful. He will be missed every day, but his impact on our district and our lives will never fade. Keith was the person who brought out the best in others and empowered others unselfishly to succeed. His kindness, vision, and leadership will forever be etched in our minds and hearts. He will be sadly missed by all. We thank you, Keith, for making us better just for knowing. agenda is the approval of the minutes for our regular Board of Ed meeting on August 28, 2018. Are there any corrections? Seeing none, they have a motion to approve these minutes. A second. second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Abstain. Those minutes are approved. And also on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes for our special board event meeting on August 29, 2018. Are there any corrections? I have, uh, Ellen, I have one. Did, um, the meeting was called to order by Mrs. Granado at approximately 5.33, and um, Mrs. Granado led the board. Okay. So may I have a motion to approve those minutes? Motion to approve is corrected. Okay, it is corrected, thank you. A second? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Abstain. And those minutes are approved. Okay, as we move on. Is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Please come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that uh, public comments are limited to five minutes. Come on up. Thank you. I'm 
after that. That was so amazing person. Uh, my name is Susan Fenley of 57 Country Club Road. Uh, but tonight I'm here representing the Weathersfield Education Foundation. The Weathersfield Education Foundation is an independent, nonprofit 501c corporation established in the fall of 2017 and dedicated to enhancing and enlivening the academic programs and initiatives of the Weathersfield Public Schools. I invite you to like our Facebook page and to look at our website, Weathersfield Education Foundation. There you'll see information about two of our upcoming events. One is our donors, founding donors campaign and the other is our inaugural event. The founding donors campaign will run from September 2018 to June 2019. Anyone wishing to support our efforts can donate by using the donate button on our website. There are three levels of support, friend for a donation of $25, sponsor for a donation of $50, and patron for a donation of $100 or more. The names of the founding donors will be listed on our website. In addition, we are currently working with a family interested in making a significant donation in remembrance of a deceased family member. To acknowledge this type of donation, a plaque will be hung as a lasting memorial. While there are many pro projects that we considered, our first initiative was decided, to, uh, we decided to focus on supporting the technology education program at Weathersfield High School. In particular, we hope to provide the Automotive Center with 21st century equipment and enhance the robotics and engineering programs with state-of-the-art 3D printers. I am pleased to announce that Monaco Ford is donating a car to the automotive program. The car will be delivered on September 19th and the delivery should be covered by Channel 3 TV. Finally, I'd like to invite everyone to our inaugural event to be held on September 27th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. in the Technology Wing of Weathersfield High School. There is no charge to attend, and the event will include exciting tours of the Tech Ed rooms, student demonstrations, and teacher presentations. The Weathersfield Education Foundation is very excited about these efforts, and we hope that local businesses and community members will help us achieve our goals. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thanks, Sue. Elaine? Sue, I don't have a question. I have a suggestion. Yes. Only because I've been on the board watching that first shovel pole going to the high school to the end. And um, my like you is mark the way to the technology section because it's so far back. Okay. And, you know, if you come in that right. door, you're going, oh, there's the media center. And, you know, there's the gym. How the heck do I get to the technology center? And I don't yes. know because this remedy has escorted us all through so many times. Yeah. As progress. You're absolutely right. And in fact, the thing that we find so exciting is that most people, when you go to the open house, never get to the technology yeah. wing. So you have no understanding of what's going on there. It's really pretty amazing. You know, That's a good idea. I'll make sure a couple of footprints on the floor. Okay. Any other comments or suggestions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Sue. <clears throat> Anyone else? Okay. Mr. Emmett, do you have communications tonight to share? I do. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Granado. Good evening again, everyone. I um, want to talk with you first uh, with regard to the Keith Raffanello Memorial Scholarship. I'm honored to announce that uh, this has been created uh, in memory of Keith Raffanello. Uh, this scholarship will be awarded to a student with financial need who will be pursuing a career in the technology or computer field. Donations to this scholarship may be made through the Weathersfield Dollars for Scholars. The scholarship will be awarded at the annual Dollars for Scholars event on Wednesday, May 29, 2019. Uh, if you are interested in making a donation to uh, Weathersfield Dollars for Scholars in peace and honor, please uh, let me know. I'll be sending out a communication to uh, the district uh, tomorrow with regard to that. With regard to our uh, upcoming change at Silas Dean Middle School, uh, as you know, I've announced at the last board meeting that uh, uh, 
um, actually beyond that, uh, that uh, Susan Apple would be departing the district to head to, to become the principal at Rockville High School. Uh, very proud to announce uh, this evening that we have an interim principal who will be coming in uh, to quote unquote close the gap, if you will. Uh, Ms. Donna Shoki, retired <coughs> principal of Smith Middle School in Glastonbury and former president of CAS. Uh, her biography from CAS is quite impressive. Uh, she serves on the central office staff as an assistant executive director at the middle school uh, level. Uh, she began serving at Glastonbury Public Schools in 1989 as a special ed teacher at Gideon Wells School and at Smith Middle School. In 2002, she was appointed assistant principal of Smith Middle School, and in 2006, after one year as the district's director of special education, lady after my own heart, uh, she became Smith Middle School principal, remaining in that position until her retirement in 2016. Under Donna's leadership, SMS garnered numerous awards and honors, including the Connecticut Association of Schools Arthur Director of Student Leadership Award, University of Connecticut's NAAG School of Education's Outstanding Professional Development School designation, and the U.S. Department of Ed prestigious National Blue Ribbon School Recognition. So she comes with a great deal of experience. Um, she became active in CAS in 2002 as a member of the Assistant Principals Committee, and she was attached for several important leadership roles and ultimately ascended to the CAS presidency in 2014. That year alone, she was active as a member of seven committees and boards and also served as a UCAT mentor. Uh, Donna was named Connecticut's Middle School Principal of the Year in 2011 and was awarded the CAS Citation, the Association's highest honor in 2012. I believe what, uh, Weather School Public Schools and South Dean Middle School will be in very good hands. Uh, we will obviously begin the process for the uh, search for the permanent replacement at uh, Silas Dean. Uh, we expect that Donna will begin on or around October 1st, probably with a couple of days of transition prior to this afternoon. Uh, Silas Dean Middle School staff uh, members are aware of this. They did let them know in a staff meeting this afternoon. They appeared quite pleased. So uh, I don't expect Silas Dean to uh, skip a beat. <coughs> in terms of the student data presentation, please plan uh, for this presentation to be done uh, before you on the September 25th board meeting. This is really the last light agenda. So those of you that have gotten used to it, it's not going to last. This uh, presentation will encompass multiple data points, including SBAC, ECT, SAT, AP, and ECE data. Give me an update on the uh, phase one. The facility study, at least it is, the facility study is currently ongoing. Charles Wright, Hammer, and Highcrest have been visited thus far. Emerson, Webb, and Silas Dean are next in the queue. Malone and McBroom continue to gather data, including real estate data from the town and current building configurations from principals. And we're currently looking at receiving an, uh, additional data on enrollment and our facilities in October. So in October, we'll get very busy with a lot of data coming before you and a lot of options. Um, the enrollment numbers are now stabilizing. However, the kindergarten sections of Canva remain 25 and 25. It was there today, and it's 25 and 25. Uh, it is my intention to add third section to kindergarten, uh, as we do not have any other options at this point in time to collapse classes. I'll certainly keep you posted as to the progress uh, with this process. We'll need to verify the cost impact for staff and materials for that third um, K classroom. Right now, we're looking at having to potentially move out tutors and uh, reallocate them elsewhere in the building, so stay tuned for that. Uh, in terms of the other um, kindergarten classrooms at this point in time, the web numbers have uh, decreased. We're now down to 21 and 21, certainly manageable. Uh, and we're down below uh, those thresholds at Highcrest. We're at 21, 21, and 21 at Emerson, and I believe at last count we're 21 and 19 at uh, Charles Wright. So numbers have stabilized. Again, numbers are a little high in the upper grade levels, but 25 and 25 are workable. And do remember, we're limited in terms of money, and we're certainly limited in terms of space of our buildings. So that's where we are with the uh, class size at this point. And with that, that's communications. Any questions or comments from Michael? And Michael, two, yes. two thoughts. Um, first, you, as many of you know, and John and I know, we, we've known Donna since childhood, and you have made an excellent choice in, in that position. Those teachers are very lucky to have Mrs. Schilke coming in. Um, the second thing is the hamner. I was over at the hamner for the fire drill for the kindergarten, and the line just kept coming up the door. <laughs> And so I'm pleased that you're making a third class of that. Um, it's a very important year for the kids. And mm -hmm. it, it just the amount of time it took to run that fire drill 
was 25 and 25 marching out the door. It was quite, it was their first trial of it. You know? mm -hmm. so, uh, a very good, good choice for those two young children. Do you have an idea when that might happen? At this point in time, we have an administrative team meeting tomorrow, so we'll be meeting with uh, Ms. Greer, we let Mr. Kazaka know. Okay. Uh, these are the plans that were kind of in place. And this is the piece, too, it's important to understand. Remember, back in like mid-August, we were looking at overloads potentially at Charles Ray, uh -huh. at Emerson, at Red Van, at Hammer. I, I'd love to be able to do this and have this in place as of day one, but the numbers are very fluid. We have kids come in, we have kids go out. So um, my hope would be that by the end of October, we have somebody in place. We'll work to um, post a position, obviously. We're going to have to look at the cost impact of materials. Um, to put materials in a classroom, there is a cost actually there as well. So. Uh, and I'll be looking to Mr. Kazaka to assist uh, with that. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Uh, I just wanted to comment. You know, I always, this did happen in the past a couple of times in buildings I was in where they split a class after the school year started. It always aggravated me. But now I see from this side of it that the numbers do fluctuate so much as we get into August and then September. So this was um, the best we could make out of a situation that came upon us with those 25, and they stayed, um, mm -hmm. which we're thrilled with. Yes. But they're too yes. big. They're just too big. So thank you. I'm glad we got that solved. Anybody else? Just one Kelly? Question. When, um, and because I'm a parent of Hammer, so I've heard a lot from the kindergarten, when are the parents going to be notified? We'll, we'll, we'll notify them tomorrow. We'll meet with the administration first and get the plan in place. I want to make sure um, when we notify parents that we have a clear plan in terms of where we're headed. Yep. Okay. All right. So we'll move on. Um, thank you, Michael. You're welcome. We do not have any action items tonight, but we do have our first reading for the proposed update to policy 1500, which is on smoking. Are there any questions or comments on this proposed update? Everybody did a reading? Um, Chris will be speaking to our policy and planning committee later in the meeting, and we'll get a summary of all that. Okay, so moving on to meetings held, we did have a special Board of Ed meeting on 8-29-18. Diane, could you speak to that for us? Yes, this meeting was on serves the hearing officers for a grievance brought forth by the custodial union regarding um, the requirement they attend a meeting regarding the transition to town. So we heard the matter. Okay, thank you. All right, and then we had our policy and planning committee. Very interesting meeting. Chris, would you speak to that one? I'll try to be brief, Madam Chair. Thank you. Yes, we had a meeting on the 29th of August to do, deal with two issues. One you've already referred to concerning prohibition against smoking, which um, was unanimously passed for the first reading and is in the packets and I think eliminates all confusion about uh, district's commitment to have a completely smoke-free environment um, at your own physical and moral peril. I think I'll put it that way. I'm just kidding. Um, it tightens up uh, the, the uh, boundaries and everything, so there's no confusion about that. And that's good, I think, obviously, for everyone here. Second issue we talked about, uh, concern policy uh, number 5870, which concerns a uh, more uniform uh, policy on the use of smartphones and other electronic devices uh, during the school day. And um, this was something that the board's been discussing now uh, for nine months or so. And we got into uh, some, some pretty interesting discussions among subcommittee members, uh, and I'll be real brief about it. The idea here is to, uh, now that uh, the, the district has accomplished its goal of the Chromebook one-on-one -on -one, uh, program, uh, the need and the use of uh, phones and other devices brought by students into the classroom becomes less of a pressing issue. Uh, and that we are trying to look at a way that we can uh, limit, uh, reasonably limit the use of these devices during instruction and other school activities uh, for a couple of reasons. One, uh, in other districts and in other countries, in fact, uh, where this has been uh, implemented, uh, it is uh, 
it has created a much more uh, conducive atmosphere to learning with a few interruptions. Uh, it has uh, empowered uh, the teachers to have greater command of the students and their attention. Uh, and also uh, eliminates a lot of the inconsistencies in previous, whereas certain classrooms were allowed to use them, certain weren't. We want to create some sort of uniformity, obviously. And this is, again, a reflection of this change of technology and the, the permanence of a smartphone. They've become literally appendages for all of us. Uh, but in this classroom setting, we're arguing that maybe it's a way that can create more um, distraction uh, than is needed. Uh, our newest member, um, uh, Kelly Evans, brought up at a great point about uh, concerns in the community about uh, parents being able to reach their children during the day, issues of emergencies and such. Uh, all good points and ones that we're going to explore as well. Uh, there are a lot of studies about that in terms of uh, emergencies and the ability of the classroom to be actually managed and controlled with cell phones involved, especially if you're handling an emergency situation where there's an imminent threat, uh, staying in place and, and trying to get people organized while phones are uh, going off and creating a whole other set of issues at a time of great um, stress for all the staff, children, parents, etc. So those are the big issues that we brought out. Um, I also want to commend the superintendent who before the meeting had issued I'll let him explain it more if he wishes, but in your packet is the, the results of a very extensive survey he did among staff here, uh, where we had anywhere between, I think, 77 and almost 80 respondents, which I, th I, was, I was told was uh, a pretty strong response from staff. And they, in turn, gave us some extremely uh, detailed information about the use of phones that have been done uh, during the sort of pre-full Chrome book period. And if you look at those, those are the um, obvious uh, needs that, that were needed at the time for students to participate in their instructions. Everything to do from research to uh, note-taking and calendars and calculators and Google Classroom and the like. All perfectly legitimate uses. Uh, but the survey also went in to talk about the other uses of the phones that have happened and the kind of uh, the challenges they pose to a teacher, uh, instructor, or coach, or art teacher, or whatever moment of instruction is going on while we're trying to teach and instruct and learn, uh, that there were a lot of inappropriate uses of these phones. Not surprising. Like there are a lot of inappropriate uses of these phones in the real adult world and businesses and such. Um, but uh, in this case, uh, the, the response was, I think, uh, overwhelming. Uh, from this survey, and I, I will, it's, it's pretty clear that they believe that a uniform policy would be uh, something they would support, they would welcome, uh, and obviously we know that this has to be completely um, further debated at great length, and make, we're going to make every effort, the chairman, and, and I agree, uh, as do other members of the committee, that we need a real public education uh, dialogue on this with uh, the obvious shareholders, stakeholders of parents and teachers and staff. And also, uh, I hope to at some point bring uh, into the into an educational setting, a hearing, a forum, uh, people from uh, law enforcement uh, to talk a little bit about the issue of uh, emergency communications with phones in emergency situations that we hope to never find ourselves in in this district, but we may. Uh, and the sort of practical applications of, of cell phones and the not so practical applications of having them in the event of an emergency. Uh, but all this is, uh, was a really good, thorough meeting. We got a lot into one hour. Um, and I was encouraged by uh, participation by the uh, members of the committee and uh, look forward to continuing this. Uh, the superintendent is also doing some additional research and as are the committee members. And we'll be uh, reaching out, obviously, to um, the community and our parents and teachers in the coming weeks uh, as we move forward with this. I think that covers it. Maybe. Thank you, Chris. Any questions for him? John? Yes, thank you, Chris, so much uh, for the update. Just so that people are aware of the, what we're doing with, with regards to the policy, I believe the smoking one is part of a Connecticut General Statute concern that we 
are trying to keep up to date in that, correct? Is correct. that something the board is, you know, we're... Yeah, it's making it completely compliant with that, and, and uh, if the previous, the previous rule or the previous policy just has a few holes in it, nothing, nothing major, but this will make it pretty clear and, and empower staff to enforce this on the campus grounds and other uh, school property. And then the, with regards to the phones, I know sometimes we, um, you know, there is an issue. Do we have a problem? Do we currently have a problem? Because once we come up with a policy that restrict, puts restrictions on it, then we create another problem. So I think that the um, committee needs, if the committee can just look at to see whether or not, I know we did a survey, but do we have a current problem with cell phone use in our schools? I think that's the concern that I think we all have to ask. Because when we, a policy or a restriction is imposed on something when there is a problem. So I don't want to create a problem if we don't have a problem. Well certainly, that's a, perfect, that's a good point. Um, we're trying to evaluate that. We've done that with one survey. We obviously want to talk to parents and students. Uh, the issue here has to be about uh, our primary charge as a board, which is to uh, create a safe learning environment with as few distractions as possible where everyone's rights and time is respected. The argument being that uh, cell phones, which are part of everyone's lives, and it's the most revolutionary device in my lifetime next to the color television. I couldn't wait for that to turn up in my house. Um, but these, this, this thing transcends uh, culture, but it is an appendage and it's been my it's my belief, the reason I've been pushing for it is I do believe that anything we can do to make the, the uh, classroom better suited for learning with as few distractions in a culture in a world which we are distracted constantly in our work, uh, that here, uh, where we have children for precious few moments, that we try to respect everyone's time, and that is the point of this. Do we have a real problem? We'll find out. The teachers uh, that we surveyed indicated that uh, it is uh, certainly an issue that we need to look at very seriously given the nature of these devices and the nature of the people that use them. And I'm not just picking on students. I mean, we do, in, we all know in work, uh, and uh, us big adults uh, violate these decorums all the time, and they're very, uh, there's a lot of lost productivity because of it. I'm all kidding aside, there is a lot of lost productivity because of it. So, Again, the, the, the idea is not to uh, punish, but again, further create a calm, thoughtful, secure, safe environment for instruction here. And anything we can do to do that, or at least to investigate to do that, I think is what we're here for. Thank you. Well, first of all, to John's question, also, um, one of the things I think Chris kind of touched on it was the part of our responsibility too is to make sure that these kids are prepared for life after high school. And um, a lot of the literature, in my personal experience too, with millennials, if you will, um, is that they are overly dependent on their cell phones to the point where um, a lot of disciplinary action in the real world is happening to them because of their dependence on, on their cell phones, or addiction, I should call it. Um, so I think that by instituting something like this will help address that. I happen to be looking by you, Chris, and seeing Eden shaking her head whenever you're talking about creating an environment in the classroom. And obviously the teachers find that the environment in the classroom is disturbed by the cell phone. So we will be looking at all of this. Well, I, I, I would just say I think we must, lucky you, yeah. showed, lucky you showed up this year, uh, <laughs> but it's critical that we hear from the students mm -hmm. because it's their lives, it's their time, it's their... Um, dedication trying to, to, to learn and I'd like to hear what they have to say about the many issues surrounding cell phones uh, that, are, that were outlined in the survey uh, where people are using these phones for anything but learning and you know, I'm not passing judgment it's just, it's just the reality of the situation.
I think the other thing too, now that we have the one-to-one -one rollout, we have the Chromebooks out, let's take a look. And that's what I liked about the policy and planning committee meeting was it's let's take a look, let's gather the data. We have some good baseline data with last year's survey. Now that the one-to-one -one is out, let's see how frequently we're seeing the cell phones come out in classrooms. We were there for day one and probably 90% of the kids that walked into that school had the phones out or had the earbuds in. But you know, let's, let's see, now that those uh, Chromebooks are out in use, we may see a decrease, in, a natural decrease in use of phones. So that'll be information we'll look to students. Certainly I see Mr. Moore sitting out in the uh, audience as well. We'll look for his expertise as well on that. Okay, well there'll be further conversation on this. Thank you everyone. Okay, and Elaine, you did our WEC, our Early Childhood Collaborative meeting yesterday. Can you talk to them? Um, yes, I had never been to an Early Childhood Collaborative meeting, and I was uh, so impressed. Uh, this committee is led by Kim Bobbin, who does an amazing job with her dedicated team on important work. So some of you are out there like I am, so uh, what does that mean? Because I had never been to a WEC meeting, so I didn't have a clue what I was walking into. So um, they have a mission to prepare and support all Wethersfield children, birth to eight, with good health and school success. And they go to whatever extreme they need to and is possible to help these children amazing they'll make backpacks for kids whose families don't know as my mother would not have known been an immigrant and never known to make one for me so you, you know they publish that if your kid needs a backpack you know you come here we'll give it to you all filled and prepared i mean amazing stuff that's just wonderful you know and, and so having a little bit of connection to what they were talking about i said wow this is just so positive for everybody um, they work to get parents, and, and I can understand, as my mother was Polish speaking, involved in the school. So in those, there was no EL people around in those days, so she didn't go to any, anything really. So, but they find, the research says, if, if your parent is involved in the school, the child will do better in school. It makes sense. But it's not always easy for someone that's not fluent in a language that's being used in the school. So they are the people who help that happen. They you know, don't send them in there on their own. You know, it's like going into the haunted house on your own. You know, what's going to happen to me? Um, they shared data on how so many families in Lettuceville do not go for prenatal care when it's free and accessible to them. And they're trying to get those parents um, to know that they can go for 40, over 41% of our families don't go for prenatal care. That makes a number to me when you think of 41%. Uh, and then they discussed something called second generation, which I was just amazed with too, because it is the, pro it is the uh, idea that the older generation, me and others, who are, let's just say, I'm not, I'm not just not saying, who laugh. Um, Keith, we're here, you really be laughing because I can't run a computer very well. So whenever I have a problem even at home, I put that, that computer and I run down here and I say, Keith, I broke it. <laughs> and he goes, you didn't break it, I'll fix it. You know, no questions asked. So the connection between older generations and younger generations makes learning possible in both directions. The mm -hmm. elderly have experiences and wisdom that the younger don't have. And so they try to do that kind of what they call second generation um, work together with young ones and old ones and grandparents and grandparents are encouraged to come to the school, you know, not you know, shutting the door of any of them. So um, it was such an active meeting. Everybody participated. Um, Sally and I left with just amazed. I mean, I was amazed at how wonderful they're working for our kids. So that's my report. This is great. Thank you. They are wonderful. Any questions for Elaine? Great group. Okay, um, so we'll move on to, we do have meetings scheduled, and this will just keep getting busier, but you have another school project building committee. Oh, yeah, on uh, September 24th at 
and finance and information management committee meeting will be on um, September 25th before our next board meeting at 6 o'clock. Okay, is there any unfinished business on the board? I know Sorry, I'm back. I'm back from all those vacations. <laughs> um, Mr. Emmett, I walked from this building, Bobby and I were here doing um, LE substitute meeting, and I walked from this building over to Hamner, and uh, just to view the large case and, and other classes. I don't want to sound like I was sitting just for the large case. But as I walked around this corner here, there is a nice sign that says public should not be here to to for a general statute, blah, 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 I don't know what it is. But it's not at all school. Mm -hmm. So if you think maybe somebody could handle that, so if I got thrown off of work school, <laughs> I felt like a nut as a board member not knowing that there was a rule, but I, I said there's no sign that should that says that, I'm sorry, I left. But, um, you're you're and, referring to the sign over at Hammer? It's right here on the corner fence, right here, as you so, know, Right here is your first house. Oh, it's still in hand. Yeah, that's that, what that is. That sign is there to discourage people walking through during the course of the school day. We have a lot of people that will walk with dogs and on that sidewalk. On the sidewalk. So that, that's why that's there. I thought that's trying to lim limit um, oh, okay. pedestrian traffic okay. during the school day. All right. Now, okay. Um, is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Um, please come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that public comments are limited to five minutes. Okay. Are there any board comments? Please, Mike. Go Ginger. I would like to say that I'm so happy to have the principal's weekly reports back because I really miss them over the summer. I know they don't miss us, but I really miss them because it's so great to see these pictures because we're not in the school. We don't get to see all the fun stuff that's happening. Um, it was really nice to see some of the building leaders assuming some ownership of the strategic plan goals because we all know that a strategic plan only works if it's everybody owns it. And I really, really like the Yacker Trackers. And I think that we should have them in all the schools because I think that's so amazing that the kids can assume responsibility for the volume level in the cafeteria without the poor aides saying. Um, so I really thought that was great. That was like the highlight of the uh, of the weekly reports for me. But uh, keep them coming. I love it. Great, great, John. Thank you, Bobby. Um, first, welcome, Kelly. Welcome. That's great to have uh, you aboard. Um, the Facilities and Maintenance Committee has scheduled a meeting for October 4th at 5.30 at Stillman. Um, we do have a quorum for that meeting, so I just want the, those to uh, be aware of that. Um, the other uh, concerns, not concerns, but excitement, was that we did have a, a meeting with the superintendent body, myself, as well as members of the uh, facilities plan group that we are working with. And we are pretty much on track, um, and the schedule is moving forward. But the excitement is that um, they're uncovering a lot of information regarding the community, the schools, what's happening, and there's going to be a presentation to the board in October on all this information. And I think it's really uh, great to see um, the involvement that we're going to be doing. And it's uh, an important project, and the commitment of the board and the town is going to be involved with this. So I think that's really great. John, can you give us an example of what you're uncovering? Well, we're going to all hear it together at the same time, and we'll be getting it at our meeting on October 4th. Okay. Okay. Over there. <laughs> I, I, for one, certainly am looking forward to the cost. I mean, right now we don't yet have numbers. I'd like to know as they go through and they look at these schools, what's the cost going to be if we were to renovate? What are the costs of, of repairs? So I'm looking at that data from an enrollment standpoint. Certainly, um, they were out looking at uh, real estate data, so I'm really interested to see 
how much of the, the movement of our students is based on people coming in to buy homes versus rentals. So a lot of interesting data will be coming forward. Even with the new uh, building, you know, how many people have taken out building permits and what's happening and if it's a, what are they building down here off the side of the scene highway, one bedroom or two bedroom. It does make a difference. So we're gonna get all the statistical information. Um, and you know, with Peter Gillespie working with the town and so the board and town are collaborating on this issue as well. So it's, it's a lot of excitement. And uh, we're, you know, looking at the capacity of our buildings and what the renovation could need uh, for our schools. So I think that's going to be a great meeting that we're going to have uh, in the end of October at this point. And what we wanted to do was make sure that we were prepared and we don't have preliminary information. It's not going to be, but we're going to be a lot real closer with the projections. Um, on October 15th, the Rocky Hill Weathersfield Elks Lodge will be putting on a drug awareness meeting. Um, that was on October, Monday from 7 to 9 at the Rocky Hill Community Center. I was approached by uh, Michael Petrella on this concern, and I know that through the Board of Ed Superintendent's Office, this information is going to be reaching the yes. families in Weathersfield. So I think it's a real important program, uh, and hopefully even you can get that information out to the high school as well on this. Um, so I think that's good. The other thing, I don't know if anyone had the opportunity to read the Harper Current this morning, but we can certainly either be happy, but it's a, a show that's going to be on tomorrow. And it's uh, Born This Way presents Death Out Loud tomorrow at 8 p.m. And one of our teachers at the Silas Sea Middle School is going to be featured in it, uh, Rachel Posner. She teaches our uh, ASL program at the Silas Dean Middle School. So she is a family of, uh, uh, she herself is deaf, her husband is deaf, and her children are. So they have different ways of communicating. And this uh, show tomorrow at 8 p.m. on a and &E, I think it would be a great program for all of us to see. And that's a, I was just happened to read it and then, oh, teacher of the science team middle school. That's uh, great. It's wonderful. I just thought that would be out and a shout out to her and her family for being featured on the show. I think it's a real good situation. That's it. Thank you, John. I have one quick one if I could. Go ahead, so, Chris. It would be possible um, for Deb or someone to put the PTO meetings on our calendar events if that's possible? So that, because I'm, I'm trying to figure them out, and I'm reading the reports, and I'm figuring them out, but maybe they put there be easier for everyone to want to attend, and we can ask you up there. Thanks. Anyone else for any comment? Okay, well, I have a couple comments here. Sue Fenley spoke today, tonight, at the uh, public comment portion of our meeting about the Westfield Education Foundation's inaugural event, and I want to speak to that because the focus of this work is also to work with local businesses by inviting them into our schools, especially our high school. We're looking for their expertise and possible funding to help the Westfield Education Foundation create a state-of-the-art high school tech for our MAC lab. Sue was mentioning this, the CAD lab, workshop, wood shop, auto shop, and for robotics and engineering. This is most exciting. Um, so I want to get a shout out to all our local businesses that I hope they respond and can be there. Um, John, you mentioned an article in The Current, and I happened to, recently I happened to notice on September 2nd, The Current read an article on child development, which was entitled, and I quote, Dr. Say, Let Kids Play. And as we discuss having our students ready for the 21st century workforce, <coughs> pediatricians are noting that play nurtures children's ingenuity, their corporation, corpor corporation, and problem solving. It lays the neural groundwork that helps them pursue goals and ignore distractions. So they won't listen to those cell phones. So parents and teachers, let them play and help us all with the goal of creating our 21st century learners. 
So if there's anyone else from the board, otherwise we're going to put Eden on the spot and ask her for any comments on life at the high school. Eden, welcome again. Thank you. It's an honor. Um, the start of the 2018-2019 school year has been a success. The one-on-one -on -one Chromebook initiative has been really helpful. And the cell phone policy has also actually been really great. My peers probably don't want to hear me say that, but it's been great. Students have really been able to focus more in class and we're really seeing the benefits of it. So it's been great so far and I'm looking forward to a successful school year. Great, you're not shy at all on this podium. Thank you very much. <laughs> Anyone else? All right, so if there's no other comments, um, do I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all and good night.